Charlene Lindsay and this is Emerald Vibes. We're going to take you to the 6th annual Adiogana Festival of the Word. This is Montserrat's premier literary event and we'll meet some of the visiting authors and take in all the color and drama that makes this three-day event simply unique. Don't go anywhere, the fun starts in just 60 seconds. I'm a focused young man. I know what I want. I respect myself by, you know, um, doing the things that right. People might say I'm young, but for me, I don't see having a whole heap of girls or stuff. I have sisters. I don't want to hurt any girls. I don't want anyone to hurt my sisters. I'm not perfect. I just try to do what's right to respect myself. I'm Johan Blake, the beast, encouraging you to live up, love, protect, and respect yourself. Live up, shout, live up, live up, shout. Ibrahim Ahmad of Akashic Books is on the lookout for the next great Caribbean author. Could that be you? We've been around for about 15 years now. We publish uh, about 30 books a year, mostly literary novels, uh, some pop culture titles, a little bit of non-fiction, but really the heart and soul of our company is publishing no novels, often from uh, up-and-coming authors, and we have a strong focus in publishing uh, writers from the Caribbean. It's really one of our uh, primary motivations as a publisher. It's something that we, uh, you know, put great value in. We go to all of the different literary festivals in the region, from the Calabash Festival in Jamaica to Bocas in uh, Trinidad to the uh, festival in Anguilla that happens in the spring. So we're very active in trying to just be on the ground and talk to people, to meet with writers, and you know, I feel that the the types of works that are being uh, written across the region are as good in the Caribbean as they are anywhere on the face of the earth. And there's a vibrancy, there's a freshness, there's a willingness to take risks uh, that makes it a very exciting part of the world for us. You need to find an agent who will then present your work to a publisher. With us for Akashic, we read every single uh, query letter that comes into us. So if someone sends us an email, a couple of paragraphs describing their project, we will look at it, we'll assess it, and we will we'll make uh, you know, the determination of whether it might be something that's appropriate for our catalog, at which point we'll then request to see some pages from the manuscript. But we read absolutely every single query letter that comes into us. Jason Reynolds of New York is one of the emerging authors of 2014. He just signed a 10-book deal, which is not an easy feat. We had a chance to speak with Jason about his latest project and why writing is so important to him. It's a book that I wrote two and a half years ago. It came out in January, and it takes place in Brooklyn, New York. And it's all about young people um, staying loyal to each other, protecting each other, and also about family and different family dynamics, right? I think we are, uh, there's a strange misconception that every single family that is different is broken, and that's not true, right? Because most of us grow up in, in families that most people call broken, but I'm, I'm not a product of anything that is broken. And so these books, so this kind of book is sort of dissecting and analyzing what we all call a broken family and what we call broken friendships and saying that, no, they're just different, and they still work with a certain amount of like value systems and love and community and loyalty and faith. And so these are the sort of principles I'm pushing in in a book like When I Was the Greatest. What inspired you to write a book like this? Uh, uh, I grew up a city kid who hated reading because he couldn't find any books that spoke to him and that talked like him and that was about his neighborhood that looked like him, right? These books don't exist, right? So the school systems are upset that kids don't want to read, but they're only presenting them with the same books that my, my mom read, you know, it's like if I'm reading a book about the 70s or the 60s or the 50s, though I should know that, 
it can't it can't be my entry point into literature. My entry point has got to be the thing that looks like me and that sounds like me. And I think that was my whole my whole premise about writing this kind of book. When we return, we'll sit down with Montserrat's literary giant, Sir Howard Fergus. Are you ready to flourish? Get Nerissa Golden's new book, 30 Day Guide to Living Happy. It offers 30 days of motivation and declarations. Get three bonus days of inspired actions and pages to note your thoughts. 30 Day Guide to Living Happy, now available on Amazon.com and NerissaGolden.com. I was always interested in a month's Russian literature. And in that particular book, people who have never been published um, are included in that book because they help to profile um, particular uh, pastors, yes. So will we be seeing more of this type of work from you in the future? Well, I don't know how long I'll be living, but writing, to be, to be, to, to, to be realistic with you, it's really almost like a disease, it's a pathology. <laughs> it is difficult to get it out of your system because already I'm thinking of a book in which I write, I, I, I publish the, the works of a number of poets, let's say eight months Russian poets, ten months Russian poets, because I'm not about just promoting myself. I'll be gone after a while, and um, I'm promoting and developing a month's Russian literature. So if I can take the works of a number of poets, the Anne-Marie Joes, the Archie Markhams, the Edgar White, and so on, the Chanel Roach, and, and publish them, the Chad Cumberbatch, I believe that I, I'd be doing a useful thing. Well, in fact, um, I don't want to put a number on it, but I really feel that my greatest legacy to Munsrat would be my writings. And I somehow feel that after I'm dead, that some people will find more value in them. So over the years, what are some of the challenges that you face trying to be published as a Caribbean author? Finance, because um, commercial publishers want to be able to publish, to print 5,000 copies, 10,000 copies. And it, it doesn't have to do with the quality of the work. Of, of course, we're emerging writers, and, and, and um, the quality may be uneven. But we, we like to see our work in print. And very often, you have to print, you have to publish it yourself. And this is costly, this is making sacrifice. But when you think that people like Derek Walcott started out by being self-published, there are multiple um, companies out there wanting to, to publish your work, to print your work. And there are some of them who will print five. And then you can go back and ask for more. So, so, so there, are, there, there are various options and models out there so that more and more persons are able uh, to publish. I was just um, at a launch the other day where a Helen Dorset, Elena Dorset, was publishing three books. So more and more people are published. And let me say I'm very impressed at the number of persons in Montserrat um, who are writing. Are you ready to flourish? Get Nerissa Golden's new book, 30 Day Guide to Living Happy. It offers 30 days of motivation and declarations. Get three bonus days of inspired actions and pages to note your thoughts. 30 Day Guide to Living Happy, now available on Amazon.com and NerissaGolden.com. <laughs> For the past two years, Coral Cay Conservation has been working on Montserrat to track and research our trails and waterways. The team was back at the Aliogana Literary Festival for the second year to educate audiences about their work and the impacts our nature has on the economy. Now, Montserrat also has 
numerous patches of extremely vibrant and diverse coral reefs, uh, extending primarily around the western coast, but there are also patches of reef around the southwest and the northwest. Um, as you probably imagine, given the fact that much of the island's marine and terrestrial area is actually still an exclusion zone, less exploration has been done of these marine areas, and Coral Key has actually been fortunate enough recently to conduct some dives in areas which might not previously have been surveyed that well. The adults aren't the only ones who get a kick out of the Aliogana Festival. Children of all ages participate in the annual writing competition sponsored by the Montserrat Volcano Observatory and also the Book Lovers Costume Parade. This year, the Coral Cay Conservation Group sponsored the costume parade, which focused on animals and the importance of protecting our oceans. I've learned that there are lots of undersea creatures under the sea. And we've also learned the importance of cotton. It's very important for the animals underwater because they're home habitats. A very big part of what we do is actually um, community um, outreach work and education projects because we are aiming to, as far as possible, build local capacity amongst the community to ensure that the long-term sustainability of projects that we actually set up is maintained. And children, especially like younger members of the community um, and school children, are probably the best way of actually doing that. Because um, we don't aim to sort of like work indefinitely in one particular area. Once we've actually imparted as much training and knowledge as possible, the idea is that it is then members of the local community who carry on with the work after our project has come to an end. And the younger generations are the key to any successful long-term initiative when you consider conservation. So by teaching them from an early age about conservation issues and conservation issues relevant to Montserrat specifically, it's a really good way of raising awareness of how important conservation work is and how people can get involved with it. I am making a treasure chest as well because we are doing a group project to go with all of these creatures and I have been going to the coral case sessions on, at the library and what I've learned from it is that how, about how important it is that we need to take care of the water. Well, I'm glad you stuck with me to the end. I hope you enjoyed Emerald Vibes. Be sure to check us out online for great behind the scenes photos and much more. Special thanks to all our sponsors and the most amazing production crew. I am Charlie Lindsay, and I think I'll go give this poetry thing an extra. Until next time, keep the vibes. Look, over there, yonder breaks, and dawn, has come too soon.